Hello and welcome to Fix My City on a Cycle Online. My name is Leslie Moy. The program focuses on service delivery issues affecting the region of Matebeleland. In today's edition of the program, we visit Sidojiwa Flats, which are found in Ward 6 in Bulawayo metropolitan area. And this time around, the United Nations, with its implementing partners, held a mobile clinic focusing on issues to do with human rights for international internally displaced uh, citizens and obviously uh, Sidojue flats houses some of the people uh, who have been internally displaced. Uh, so let's get, let's get to hear uh, how uh, the program progressed and we get also to hear the concerns uh, from uh, the residents of uh, Sidojue flats. One of the oldest flats in Bulawayo, situated in Belmont in the Shell area along Halifax Road. It being the oldest and somewhat neglected in appearance and nature. It is a warm to a number of families. The flat buildings were built around 1952 and were formerly used to house workers in the area and particularly called Storage Commission, La Mayama Company Zakona Ezuma Mo Ewa mentioned Lo Otan Lo And then, as the years went by, the status of accommodation changed and currently families are living here. Our current living conditions are beyond explanation. There is overcrowding in each room that was initially meant to house two or one. Now houses are up to 12 in one room. In the year 2001, there was a relocation exercise that was carried out and residents were meant to be moved to the new Millennium Housing Project in Mkanwini Township. It was meant to target all the residents of Sitojiwe and all were registered to relocate. We were surprised that only flat one and half of flat two were relocated, whilst flat three and the remaining half of flat two were promised to be relocated until this day nothing has been said or done. Currently flat number one has been filled with new residents as well as the other half of flat two which increased the population and is given way to overcrowding as two families are accommodated in one room. In light of this, there are a number of inhuman conditions we are living with on a daily basis. This has impacted on our dignity as human being as the conditions are dire. The true reflection of life as seen by our children is tainted daily. Plumbing is always broken as the infrastructure is old. Our hygiene is compromised. Domestic violence is rife and children are exposed to this daily. Access to electricity is minimal. Life is very difficult and unbearable. Flat one, the residents purchase their own power they are also from time to time assisting, assisted by the city council. Flat 2, no power since September 2020, eight months to, to the day, and we live in darkness unsafe for children and adults. Cooking is done in the kitchen using unsafe heating material that is harmful to our health, and we have no choice as nothing is being provided for us to use. Flat 3, we have a bill that has been a challenge to settle as a flat. To this end, children cannot study at night and nights have become long and are dreaded by everyone as safety is compromised. The daily expense of candles is unsustainable as finances are non-existent. Once sunset arrives, we are confined to our rooms till daybreak. We live barely on one meal a day and the expense is double due to lack of storage or refrigeration. The buildings are in a dilapidated state, adding on to the dire living conditions. There are a lot of broken windows and doors that leave us beyond, that leave us exposed to all the undesirable weather conditions. Water runs continuously from taps that require plumbing attention and overhaul. 
The toilet sewer system has become overrun due to overcrowding and lack of upkeeping and maintenance. The pipes periodically burst or give in and we are, we are then again exposed to unhygienic living area as this can go unattended for some days. This leaves us exposed to airborne and waterborne diseases. Affordable health care is also a challenge for us as we have elderly in our community that require periodic health checks and medication. There are also some members of the community that opt rather to ignore their injuries or pain in light of the expense they will face in the hospital for their treatment of medical attention. Because whatever finances are used, they will directly be taken away from their mouth as, as employment and finances are scarce. We face with large numbers of unemployment in our community due to the lack of self-esteem in our place of residence. The lack of access to education due to funding inabilities, this leaves some children not going to school. Youth and women are adversely affected by the, as they don't have access to retooling or skills colleges to equip them with the necessary skills to get employment or self-employment to get the financial independence as you all have dreams for attaining, for attaining a better life through hard work. Another factor of the inability to go further in life is the access to documentation, for example, birth certificates. Some parents never acquired, acquired any type of documentation, letting the next generation not being eligible for documentation, and the process seemingly cumbersome. They go on without documentation. This has resulted in children not being able to register for schooling and some not having identification documents. In our living conditions, we, face, we are faced daily with these challenges. Point number one, the lack of privacy due to overcrowding, unhygienic conditions due to leaking sewer and leaking pipes, High risk of contracting diseases like COVID-19, TB, malaria due to overcrowding, tall grass in the surroundings, and other waterborne diseases. Poor or limited access to sanitary wear. Children not going to school due to lack of finances. Children are exposed to situations not befitting them. Unemployment is rife. For example, lack of access to retooling or further education due to lack of finances. Access to documentation is needed to afford the children and adults the opportunity to get documents and access important, important services in schools. Housing is not weatherproof. Elements of the weather are always affecting us. Lack of recreational and educational facility safe for children and youth and community for example, playground, sport, computer lab, affordable health care, lack of checkups, safety and security are a cause of concern. This, this is a few words in the life we live here. Our aspirations to be better people are evident. We are only seeking an opportunity to be better, to better our lives and give our children and next generation a better life. I thank you. You can go and get any luck or who's the luck who's a camus this to achieve were relocated to other council rent rented houses in and around Bulawayo. Following the huge displacement of people, 
through the Murambashin exercise in 2005, the place was reoccupied, reoccupied by, affect, by those affected by the scheme and had lost accommodation. And so reopened the block on humanitarian grounds to temporarily house part of the affected population. This, of course, was not an improvement or ideal situation, but it kept people from the harsh realities of the weather elements. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, while it's to acknowledge that uh, this is not an ideal place for people to reside in this 21st century, the problem of human settlements is still with us and we urge partners here to come on board and assist us. Uh, this is um, not the first time that we have people removed from unsuitable accommodation and they return. You recall the uh, IOM assisted program at, at Mazu village where squatters were removed and uh, placed there. Then new uh, occupants would come in uh, and uh, fill the gap that has been left by people that have been removed. So at the end of the day, we want a final solution, a comprehensive solution to these uh, problems. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, all the units had been cleared and re uh, relocated to M. Kanwin. 86 original residents also still remain, and council has made efforts to relocate these to Kaudru Park, the project, and has allocated these uh, residents 120 stands. Efforts will be made to accommodate further residents who are interested in the scheme and can afford to meet these selling conditions. And that's where the, 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 the problem is, uh, that uh, as, as a city, we may avail land for uh, those affected uh, and those residing in such conditions, and uh, the challenge would then be, are they able to then meet the selling conditions and the building conditions for those stands as may be availed by the city. The city will continue to ensure that our residents have safe accommodation and with the help of partners, we will navigate this uh, conundrum. I welcome you all to this function and hope that we have great deliberations and uh, while it's still continuing to uh, observe the protocols uh, that were laid down by the World Health Organization to mitigate the effects of this COVID-19 pandemic. I welcome you all to the Bulawayo Mobile Human Rights Clinic organized by IOM and her partners, that is Zimbabwe Human Rights Association, ZHLDT, Zimbabwe Lawyers for Human Rights, Zimbabwe Peace Project, Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission operating in Bulawayo, headed by Umama Commissioner Moyo, and other IOM partners visiting and exhibiting today. All these partners have been implementing the program meant to coordinate, protect, promote, and enforce human rights for citizens and other vulnerable groups, including eternally displaced persons in Bulawayo metropolitan province. It is indeed an honor to the city of Bulawayo, to the province of Bulawayo, to have UN heads of mission and IOM and her partners supporting us, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, where the world at large was hit with the unexpected virus and everyone had to adjust to the new normal of sanitizing, wearing face masks, and always ensuring we maintained social and physical distance of one meter and more. Allow me to thank IOM and her partners and other stakeholders who took their time to educate Zimbabweans on how to stay safe I would also like to acknowledge the PPE material support that was received from Zimbrides and Zimbabwe Humanitarian and Livelihoods Development Trust and distributed to different prisons and clinics. Thank you so much for the job well done. EPUB 
was also received in different isolation and quarantine centers. The Zimbabwe Peace Project has been monitoring the environment and sharing reports while Zimbabwe Lawyers for, for Human Rights has been offering legal support when necessary. It is indeed an honor to have you to have your partners supporting us. It is also an honor to have the Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission being part of the IOM team and with offices in the province. Thank you so much. Today we are at Estuchiwe Flats, which ideally was designed to cater for bachelors accommodation for workers in the Wolawayo industries of Belmont West. Wakunga vunye lwa ugutu mgaako ngae salala wena ulo muze cholotu ugutu vagachu sobo nungaako wakumele guve ngungaako gupela oza zuzi tu wagu vagache ilekai unga pamba nisubu yela a wagui wawe kumteto mkulu wakulu ungaako Nyemva kugazibute ukazibuse kwa kwa ngweveka kwa ngweveka abantu babuya lamakhosi kazi labantwana babo hence i population ebikhulunywa ngobabu meya ngobabu councilor SCT kwa kumele bebe less than 200 but currently i population stands at 400 and that alone kufuna Sindawoni, as people of Zimbabwe, as people of Bulawayo, city put our heads together. How best can we manage? Lo kwezi peganelako, sense njani. Together we'll come up with a solution. Together we can make it. Um. This was the bachelor's accommodation for workers in the Bulawayo industries of Belmont West, Dunnington, NRZ Complex, Cold Storage Commission, Dunlop, among others. As you may be aware, the increased modernization of cities and townships and in increase in population has exerted pressure on the existing housing units, not only in Bulawayo, but globally, the demand for housing and labor changed the housing policy of bachelor residential accommodation to family accommodation. For instance, the three blocks of flats could carry an optimum labor of 180. I have already uh, explained this. If single and double sharing of 540, could be easily absorbed, but this has since changed in view of the successive droughts, which led to an increase in rural to urban migration. In line with government's national housing delivery program, which is being implemented by the Minister of National Housing and Social Amenities, the province has since identified land to build approximately 2,000 housing, housing units, and this will definitely decongest Stojiwe flats. Once again, I would like to thank the United Nations Mission together with IOM and her partners, the work they are doing in Bulawayo metropolitan province. Ladies and gentlemen, Baba Mayor, Siabo Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, that's it for the camera. You can come in the class. Your worship. Thank you. Our dedication, the handing over. Some token of appreciation <laughs> to our minister, to our mayor. <laughs>
This, this accommodation was basically meant for uh, bachelors, right? And it was supposed to accommodate a total of 180 uh, individuals, right? But Cates we got all, over 400. Because everyone who's failing to pay, they've just come in here to hide, kind of. They've got their own internal arrangements. But it's a, it's a proper refusal under council. By right, no one should come in without the council's knowledge. But because of the situation, which is on the ground, we've allowed people just to find some shelter. But at the, at the expense now of armor services, the health risky. You know, council has been uh, really caught in between. One time we want to make sure that people move out, but at the same time we don't have a place where we can just go and give them free accommodation. Like all artists, we got armor stands, but in a stand is uh, averaging about $4,000. For us to just do it on our own to give someone a stand for $4,000, when someone is failing to just get a meal for the day, it's very difficult. So that's why we've brought in these partners to say, IOM, we've got capacity, UN, we've got capacity, help us. We don't have capacity, we don't have jobs. You know, people from here, they just need your assistance. That's why we're here today. So, what, uh, so in terms of partnerships, uh, what, are they, what are they coming to do to assist uh, in yeah. terms of the country? Because over, over years, we've uh, written letters to most of them, uh, uh, just highlighting our plight to say what sort of assistance can we get. Our basic assistance we need here is to say we need to decongest uh, uh, people who are staying here, uh, find accommodation, suitable accommodation for, for them. Tina's Council are ready to provide land, but we need somebody who can then come and assist us also in terms of development, right? To say how do you develop, how do you pay for those who benefit. Once we are left with the 180 here, as Council, we are going to refurbish these, these flats so that they, they, they continue to assist those 180, not more than that, which is what is happening at the moment where they are sharing flats. So basically we are looking for assistance from these partners to say, uh, you are bigger partners, you have got capacity. This community, small as it is, it needs your help. Basically that's where we are. In terms of basic services here, mm. uh, are the uh, uh, tenants paying for them, water, electricity, yeah. and even the uh, uh, accommodation? Uh, electricity has been a problem uh, since we moved away from... Um, Kanzo used to pay for electricity before, before the, this meter, prepaid meters. But uh, when prepaid, uh, prepaid meters came, the rest is now we're supposed to be paying for their, for their own, um, uh, for their own uh, electricity. They are failing to do that. And each, each, each flat, council is supposed to get a rent from each flat. And they were, were charging as minimum as less than $20, 20 RTGS. They are even failing to pay that. That's how pathetic the situation here is. So other basic um, uh, facilities like health uh, services are really not happening at all. People are just buying as well, basically. We are, we are dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. And, yes. Uh, you have mentioned before that uh, yeah. the living arrangements here, they are not uh, suitable. Yes. So what is council doing or have you had some partners assisting yeah. you to ensure that uh, there is no outbreak of COVID-19 here? Yes. Well, once lockdown stopped, uh, this, this matter has been on a high priority. It was postponed so many times, you know, to have this team to visit us here. So once we started operating council, our first priority was basically to say those partners, they now need to come because we've been really, really lucky. For 400 people staying together, they don't have even basic things like armor sanitizers. They don't get the, you can, I can arrange them for them as a councillor once off, but after that one, you can't continue to do that, it's not sustainable. 
So we then made sure we needed to have this team to come. And uh, part of what we need now to do is in the next couple of months to come is to do the, the follow-ups. I know they need to communicate their back to their head of the office, but I'm happy they've seen for themselves and they are ready to, to assist. This was what we're waiting for now. You've heard for yourselves uh, some of the challenges uh, faced by residents uh, here at uh, Situatua Flats uh, in Ward 6 uh, in uh, Bulawa. Your challenges to do with accommodation, there's overcrowding uh, because uh, some of these uh, people were uh, displaced from other areas and they found uh, uh, accommodation here at uh, Situatua Flats. Uh, so the United Nations and other implementing partners came here uh, for a mobile clinic. A high-powered delegation uh, from the UN was here to see uh, the challenges faced by uh, uh, residents here here in Sotochi. Hopefully uh, some of the challenges that uh, the residents uh, managed uh, to raise uh, will be addressed uh, uh, by the local authority, by government uh, and other uh, partners. Uh, let's get to uh, meet again in the next edition of uh, Fix My City. My name is Leslie Moyo. It's goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.